Good morning, everyone. This is Michael Mile here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for October 5th, 2020, recorded around 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a wide look across the tropics right now, we have a lot going on today. We only have two named storms, however. First of all, we'll start with the first of the two with Tropical Storm Gamma with maximum sustained winds of 45 miles per hour now starting to weaken as that southwesterly shear really kicks in now. We talked about this over the last several days that this really wasn't going to have a chance to survive much uh, once it got into the Gulf of Mexico. And you can really see that circulation sitting right off the northeast coast of the Yucatan Peninsula right now. And this will continue to drift uh, over the next several days over towards the west and southwest while gradually weakening into a remnant circulation, tropical depression or remnant circulation as it moves towards the west-southwest. We also have Tropical Storm Delta near Jamaica right now, which could pose a serious hurricane threat down the road to portions of western Cuba or the United States Gulf Coast. Now, where exactly this ends up once it ends up into the Gulf of Mexico remains to be seen, but anywhere from the Texas coastline all the way through the Florida Panhandle remains kind of under the gun right now uh, for a hurricane threat, and this could be a fairly substantial hurricane uh, once it moves up into the Gulf of Mexico. So we'll talk about that here more in a moment. Focusing uh, briefly on Tropical Storm Gamma, we can see a very exposed center of circulation right now. You notice that if we scroll up here, you notice where all the deep convection is associated with the storm. It's kind of this broad area of mess up here. That's all the deep convection associated with Gamma, and this is a pretty exposed center. You can very clearly see that. There is no uh, such deep convection around to speak of uh, anywhere, basically. And that's because we have all this dry air wrapping around from this very cool air that's been left over the Gulf of Mexico in response because of a front that came down, stalled across this area. This is also producing some southwesterly shear that's kind of kicking all of this dry air into the inner core. And this is what your net result is of that. So you don't really have much to talk about with this and this will kind of just be meandering over the same area over the next several days now this is still producing some kind of shallow convection so this is producing some shallow uh, showers uh, especially near the coast of the yucatan peninsula but it's not substantial deep convection like you see here but of course any of these heavier showers that do end up rotating in can uh, you know aggregate that flooding that we've already seen over the last several days. So with that being said, there is the potential for additional flooding concerns, but it is really starting to look like as this kind of just drifts around, it will just be left within a very hostile environment and actually may come inland over the next several days. And we can really see what's kind of hindering the storm right now. We can see this very large uh, front here. This is in response because of this cold front that uh, initially came through, sagged across the Florida uh, Peninsula, and then kind of retrograded back northward. Now it's sitting over north central Florida where all the widespread um, cloud cover is right now. We even have some heavier rain uh, within this general area in here. So that is something to kind of be uh, noted that we do even have some of the widespread cloud cover uh, across portions of northern Florida right now. And this is going to aggregate uh, some flooding concerns over northern Florida. Uh, but southern Florida right now dealing with some dry air, so that should be pretty good. Uh, but this will just kind of mill around over the next several days and shouldn't be of much deep concern. But this may play a pivotal role in what happens with tropical storm Delta, which we'll talk about here in a second. Now you can see the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center showing all of the tropical storm force winds mainly on the northern side of it. This will be milling around over the next several days, losing its tropical storm uh, status, weakening to a tropical depression, finally pulling back northward. Now this might be, in fact, the remnant circulation by this time because this could actually drive inland a little bit. Now there is still a tropical storm watch in effect for portions of the west coast uh, of the Yucatan Peninsula there. Uh, but nothing really significant. Again, if anything, it's going to aggregate flooding concerns down in this region, but shouldn't be of much wind concern uh, as we kind of move forth with time. 
Now, moving on to Tropical Storm Delta, a very impressive looking little compact storm this morning. And again, you can very clearly see the vigorous circulation embedded within the deep convection here. And we, you know how we talked about yesterday that we had a rather exposed low level center with all of the deep convection off towards the south. Well, today, during the overnight hours and today, we have now started to see a center that actually did reform to the south. And we talked about how that was a distinct possibility because the vortex was still relatively weak. And a weak shallow vortex easily can reform under deep convection. And we very clearly see that. We see this very nice curling band uh, into the center here, these deep convective curls uh, that are wrapping around. And this helps to build that inner core structure that we very can clearly see that's starting to build right now. So we have this very nice, well-defined banding structure that's evident on the satellite imagery. And we can see that even in, uh, as we kind of loop it here, that we do have a developing inner core structure. Now, it wouldn't be completely surprising to see this become a hurricane later today south of Jamaica. And again, this is the island Jamaica right here. Now, this is going to bring impacts still to Jamaica. Again, the, the, these heavy rain bands that will be rotating in, especially going over the mountains, this causes the upslope convection. Uh, so you get enhanced orographic lift. And again, this is a tropical air mass down in here. So these showers and thunderstorms are very efficient rain producers, the very efficient rain producers that can produce, you know, three to four inches of rain. If you get under a training band, let's say for an hour, you could easily see three to four inches of rain. And we can already start to see kind of the, this training band start to set up across the northeast coast of Jamaica right now. This training band is going to keep rotating in. And as the storm moves generally off towards the northwest here, this will kind of uh, come over most of the islands. So we'll start to see these training bands rotate in from even well away from the storm, but you can very clearly see. So this is going to be a problem for Jamaica, uh, even though you're not getting the inner core of the storm, which is great news. You're going to be getting some flooding concerns. And again, these are going to be very efficient rainfall producers. Uh, but again, we can very clearly see today that the uh, tropical upper stratospheric trough that was hindering the storm earlier has now weakened. It's pinched off a little bit. We do have somewhat of an alleyway for dry air to kind of be entrained and adjusted. But so far, that's not really hindered the storm much. Deep convection continues to curl around, and we have hints of an inner core structure trying to form uh, now uh, around that. So this is going to be very pivotal for the eventual evolution, and track and intensity-wise, with regards to uh, Delta now. So if we look on the GFS forecast, this is the 700 to, 700 to 400 millibar relative humidity product. And again, we've shown this over the last several days. But the greens here, that's all your moist air in the atmosphere and your browns, this is uh, dry air in the atmosphere. And again, right now we can see with Tropical Storm Gamma, very clearly we're getting this dry air to be wrapped around as the frontal boundary is positioned something like this. We can see the denotation between where the moist air mass lies and where the dry air mass lies. Now, because again, this is a circulation, your dry air that's been left around by all of this cooler, uh, kind of the cooler air, the cooler, drier, stable air that's been left around by this cold front is now going to be wrapped around into the circulation. And we can very clearly see that being wrapped around. Now, uh, again, for Delta, though, we can also see much of the same process that we have dry air to the north. Now, as the storm moves generally towards the northwest, we're not expecting a significant hindrance, but this dry air might try to get wrapped around from time to time and may, may kind of play a pivotal role in keeping the storm a little bit more on the weakish side of hurricane intensity. Now, Bottom line, this is probably in all likelihood going to reach hurricane status probably today or tomorrow, but this dry air, if it does get ingested, may help to kind of limit the intensity in the Caribbean, and that's very important for what happens down the road, but equally important is how strong it gets in the short term. Now, we can kind of look at this on the GFS. If this is 24 hours from now. And the GFS actually might be a little bit too weak with the vortex here. That's 997 millibars. Uh, but with an inner core structure already trying to form today, it wouldn't be surprising to see this be a hurricane later today or tonight. We can also see here the circulation associated with Tropical Storm Gamma as it's now moving to the southwest. Now, 
This is where things get very complicated down the road. Again, we can see all of this dry air, dry stable air right now that's kind of lifting uh, out from this tropical upper tropospheric trough. And that's kind of building over and moving westward with time. And we can clearly see that showing up in the model field that this is kind of pushing off towards the west. Now, the GFS has this as a hurricane here by 0Z uh, Tuesday evening or 8 o'clock Tuesday evening or 0Z Wednesday but Tropical Storm Gamma is kind of just holding on here. We can see that a little bit of a moist pocket might help to regenerate some deep convection, uh, at least somewhat near the center, although there will still be some strong shear. But what this might do is keep Gamma around for just a little while longer. Now, a lot's going to depend on how Delta actually interacts here with Gamma because you notice that these two are actually in close proximity to one another. These two are in close proximity to one another, uh, really only about near 400 nautical miles or so. So they're actually not that far removed from each other. And what this is going to do is Gamma actually, if Gamma is still kind of hanging around as you know a, a borderline tropical storm, it may actually uh, insert some influence here into tropical a storm delta or you know by this time hurricane delta's um projection uh, with track uh, again because we have this flow coming out of generally you know a counterclockwise circulation uh, generally our flow is going to try to steer our storm and pinwheel it around uh this storm here around gamma now, eventually, we can kind of see that happen here, that gamma, it does weaken the storm, but it actually pinwheels. We get kind of this pinwheeling effect where uh, delta kind of comes across much like that and turns abruptly westward, and then gamma comes inland. So we have this pinwheeling effect going on. Eventually, gamma kind of releases delta and moves it back towards the north here very sharply, and we see somewhat of a projection like that. But by midweek, we're going to start to be seeing some changes here. And if we look on the GFS steering pattern at the 200 millibar layer in the atmosphere, we can see very clearly what's going on here with gamma under a very strong uh, south to southeasternly or southwesternly, yeah, southeasternly shear component. And uh, that's kind of making our storm really lackluster. We also have this uh, front end through here carrying the upper level winds out of the north. So we're getting a lot of the push and pull kind of effect here. And again, you know, that's why a weaker storm here is going to get tugged further westward and then back down into the Bay of Campeche. So this is very important kind of going forth with time. We see the upper level pattern begin to become more favorable in the Caribbean by this time here on Tuesday. And we can see this under a very light anticyclonic flow in the atmosphere. And then eventually, now as we move out here to hour 66, some things are starting to change here with the overall pattern. This is by 0Z Wednesday or 8 o'clock uh, Wednesday evening. We have this front that's dipping in through here right now. We have this front with our jet max associated like that. Now this front is kicking up shear out of the south and southeasternly direction. But what also is ahead of this front is we have very dry air that's ahead of this front. Now, given the fact that we have some shear in this environment, as the storm creeps northward, the shear direction is now going to start to change a little bit. And we can start to see that kind of happen, that we start to assert more of a southwesternly shear component. Now, if we actually look here on the, uh, the relative humidity, once again, we kind of move out here, we notice all of this dry air that's kind of hanging around here right now, all this dry continental air that's hanging around. We also have dry air pushing in over the Florida Peninsula. But this dry air eventually is going to get wrapped around into the circulation. And we can very clearly see that happen. That the dry air now starts to get just gulped into the storm. And we start to rapidly weaken our storm on approach into Louisiana on, on kind of its final approach. Now, this could still be a hurricane by the time. But we can kind of see why that's happening is because now the shear is starting to change a direction here out of the southwesterly direction. With shear that's changing and also dry air, this might help to rapidly weaken any storm that is approaching into this environment along with cooler sea surface temperatures. We do have uh, not so uh, kind of good sea surface temperatures, uh, especially near the shelf waters because this cold front really took a big dip 
out of this uh, warm, uh, you know, kind of the warm shelf waters because those are easily disturbed. Uh, so that's one thing we're going to have to watch. Now, again, at least for the next, you know, couple of days, at least for the next three days or so, uh, this looks to have a fairly significant chance of undergoing rapid intensification down here in the Caribbean. Uh, but again, after that point, it's going to start to encounter a more hostile environment. And again, things remain very uncertain at this time. Now, the forecast from the National Hurricane Center does take this again as a tropical storm through the next couple of days and moves it very near or over the western part of Cuba. And there is a hurricane watch for the Cayman Islands and the western part of Cuba, as this could be at hurricane strength already. And then this moves uh, kind of westward. I mean, you can kind of very clearly see that bend here. That's because this pinwheeling effect associated with gamma. Whatever gamma's influence is, uh, if gamma is still kind of hanging around, this might help to tug our storm a little bit towards the west and then releasing it kind of something like that. Now, if it does something like that, it's going to stay within a little bit warmer waters in this area. Uh, but if it does track further eastward here, uh, as kind of shown by the Hurricane Center forecast, then we actually might have a, a storm that does struggle once it gets up into this part of the uh, kind of the Gulf of Mexico here. So there's a lot of uncertainty going forth with time. Uh, of course, for the Gulf Coast, you have a couple of days to watch this. And unfortunately, we're looking at what could be another powerful hurricane threat down the road, uh, especially for some portion along the Texas, uh, all the way from the Texas coastline, all the way through New Orleans, uh, Mobile, and the Florida Panhandle, does at least have some risk of experiencing hurricane conditions, tropical storm or hurricane conditions over the next couple of days. Uh, but thankfully, you still have some time. Uh, so take, you know, hurricane preparedness plans uh, in, into precaution right now. And if you live in the Cayman Islands or the western tip of Cuba, you obviously need to be monitoring and preparing very quickly uh, as this is a, a rapidly evolving situation and will only take a couple of days, you know, the next two days or so to really be in this part of the world. So, again, very important to understand that you have to prepare now to save life and mitigate property damage. All right. But that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.